Welcome to 12 Days of Mystery Files! A terrifying figure named Gryla is one of Iceland's most well-known Christmas figures. She is a giant troll with hooves for feet and has 13 tails. This lady troll is always in a bad mood to her insatiable hunger for children. Each Christmas, Gryla comes down from her mountain dwelling to hunt for bad children. She places them in a sack and drags them back to her cave where she boils them alive for her favorite stew. However, any child which repents must be let go. Gryla's wrath is not reserved solely for human children. She has also killed two of her husbands. The Yule Lads are the 13 sons of Gryla. Most of them are depicted as mischievous pranksters and petty criminals. Their dirty tricks led to each of their own specific naming. The Yule Cat is the Christmas cat of Gryla and the Yule Lads, who is described as having sharp teeth and yellow eyes. It stalks the snowy countryside and gobbles up anyone not equipped for the cold and wintry weather. To this day, Gryla and her creatures remain a mystery. One of the UK's first UFO hotspots is a small town named Warminster. Throughout the 60s and 70s, it was a haven for UFO sightings. However, prior to sightings, there were unexplained sounds. On Christmas morning in 1964, many residents were disturbed by a series of strange noises, which consisted of strong pounding vibrations described as sonic attacks. One resident was awoken by the repeated sound of something falling onto her roof. When she looked out the window, she heard a strange humming noise, but the weather was clear and nothing had come in contact with her roof. This same experience was reported by many others in different locations that morning. However, no one saw anything strange, nor could they figure out where these sounds originated. The most unusual incident involved a resident who was knocked to the ground, unable to move due to sound. There were many more reports of strange unexplained sounds, then witnesses started reporting UFOs in the sky, and flying saucer evidence began circulating but led to nothing. Even so, no one has ever been able to explain the origin of the strange sounds heard on Christmas 1964. On December 25th, 1885, Mr. and Mrs. Patrick Rooney were found dead in their kitchen by their hired hand, John Larson, and their son, John Rooney, at their home in Seneca, Illinois, USA. In the kitchen, a partly burned candle stood on the table, and next to the table was a hole burned through the floor measuring two and a half feet by three feet, through which the ground under the house could be seen. In that hole was a heap of ashes, which was found to also contain a skull and other bones that were nearly reduced to a cinder, along with two human feet still in their shoes, which were both charcoaled. Nothing Nothing else in the kitchen was damaged by fire directly, but most of the house's interior walls and furniture were coated with a dirty, greasy, sooty substance. Investigation by the police and coroner led to the conclusion that Mrs. Rooney was a victim of spontaneous human combustion, a situation in which it is believed that human body somehow ignites itself and reduces itself to ashes in a very short time. On Christmas Eve, 1945, the Sauter family's home burned down. The cause was traced to defective wiring, despite the fact that the Christmas tree lights were still on after the fire started. The oldest two sons and two daughters survived, but the five middle children were missing and no trace of the remains were ever found. Believing that the fire was a cover for the abduction of their children, George and Jenny Sauter spent a fortune on detectives to investigate. Speculation suggests the kids were abducted by an illegal child selling agency similar to Georgia Tans with the help from local police. Two months before the fire, the Sauters had an argument with another Fayetteville resident who tried to sell them life insurance. The resident warned that the Sauters' house would burn down and the children would vanish. He was also a member of the coroner's jury, which ruled the fire accidental. There were many speculations as to what might have happened to the Sauter family, but to this day, it remains a mystery. This next mystery is a two-for-one special. First up, we have the Tomtin. Don't let this evil little gnome's looks deceive you. He might look like a cute little gnome, but you will not want to mess with him. Not only does he possess immense strength, but he does not mess around. He's easily offended, and if you cross him, if you're lucky, you'll get a hard strike to the ear. Otherwise, he might kill your livestock, beat you half to death, drive you insane, or kill you with his poisonous bite. But if you treat him well, he'll protect your household. Next up, we have a cute little gingerbread house. Just kidding, it's time for Lumpy, Dumpy, and Clumpy. These are three psychotic, giggling gingerbread men who lure hungry, unsuspecting kids into getting impaled on hooks and then dragged up the chimney. As a team, they're also mighty handy with a nail gun. This Christmas, Ginger snaps back. Krampus is a Central European legend about a half-goat, half-demon monster that punishes misbehaving children at Christmas time. He is a devilish companion of Saint Nicholas. Krampus is believed to have originated in Germany, and his name derives from the German word Krampen, which means claw. Krampus was thought to have been a part of the pagan rituals for the winter solstice. According to legend, he is the son of Hell, the Norse god of the underworld. With the spread of Christianity, Krampus became associated with Christmas. Despite efforts by the Catholic Church to ban him, the creature in St. Nicholas is said to arrive on the evening of December 5th, 
otherwise known as Krampus Night. While St. Nicholas rewards nice children by leaving presents, Krampus beats those who are naughty with branches and sticks. In some cases, he is said to even eat them or take them to hell. Festivities involving Krampus include the Krampus Run, which people dress as the creature and parade through the streets. Krampus began to be celebrated internationally and the monster gained popularity. Whether he is real remains a mystery. In the film Krampus, Perkta is a demented angel doll, but her origins go way back to Germanic roots in the early Middle Ages. She has several names throughout Europe like Bafana and Babushka. Her reputation ranges from sweet to sadistic. She's always described as a domestic goddess, either a beautiful one or a wrinkled head with a hook nose and raggedy clothes. She always has a giant foot that either comes from her endless days working on foot pedals or spinning wheels or from her ability to shapeshift into a goose. She's the inspiration behind Mother Goose. She's obsessed with cleanliness and good-mannered kids. If kids are bad, they get disemboweled, have their innards replaced with garbage, stew, and pebbles, and get sewn up to suffer alone afterwards. She carries a broom to fly on, and is known as a witch who is seen at Christmas celebrations around Europe, sharing candies or planning her next ritualistic torture. She also employs horned demons to help her punish bad kids. John Bonet Ramsey was an American child beauty queen. She was only six years old when she was murdered in her home on December 26, 1996. Her murder, which is still unsolved, became one of the decade's most famous police investigations. On the morning of, John Bonet's mother, Patsy, called the police after finding a three-page ransom note demanding $118,000 for her daughter's safe return. The public viewed the parents as guilty due to their inconsistent stories and their behavior in media appearances. The cryptic ransom note was discovered to be written on paper, found at their house, and fiber retrieved from duct tape that bound JonBenet's body matched the same fiber on Patsy's clothes. The parents were never charged due to insufficient evidence. Outside of the Ramsey family, the media has also reported on others deemed suspicious, including the housekeeper to the electrician to even the town Santa. However, none of these people have been charged to this day and it remains a mystery. In December of 1900, a boat set sail for the island of Elon Moore off the coast of northwestern Scotland. A captain was tasked with bringing a lighthouse keeper as part of a regular rotation, and when the captain and his crew finally arrived, it was clear that something was wrong. None of the normal preparations at the landing dock had been made, the flagstaff was bare, and none of the keepers came to greet the boat. The keepers, as it turned out, weren't on the island at all. All three of them had vanished. People believed the island to be paranormal, with its only permanent residence being sheep. What the ship crew did find at the lighthouse was a set of strange clues. Inside the kitchen table contained plates of food, the clock was stopped, and there was an over turned chair. The lamp was ready for lighting and two of the three coats belonging to the lighthouse men were gone. Theories went wild. Was it supernatural? Sea creatures? A case of madness and murder? A government operation? Foreign spies? Aliens? No storms were even reported within the area. Their disappearance still remains a mystery. The next case we have is Mary Lloyd, also known as the Christmas Zombie Horse or more plainly known as the Grey Horse. Welsh revelers dress up as this creepy pantomime by hoisting a horse skull upon a stick and covering its bearers with a white sheet. It walks the dark streets with a costumed owner to bother neighbors for grub and alcohol. Traditionally, the horse knocks on a door and sings a song requesting entry. The homeowners refuse with a counter song and then go back and forth until the homeowners eventually relent, though it's not entirely clear why. Perhaps it's just to end the creepiness and public embarrassment of being manhandled by a dead singing horse. While softcore types will use a paper horse head instead of an actual skull, others adorn their horse heads with ribbons, glass eyes, and mouths that open and close, all the better for scaring children and adults as the wassail and cider flow. The Wendigo is a supernatural being belonging to the spiritual traditions of First Nations. Wendigos are described as powerful monsters that have a desire to kill and eat their victims. People consider Wendigos dangerous because of their thirst for blood and their ability to infect otherwise healthy people or communities with evil. A human becomes a Wendigo after they are corrupted by greed or weakened by extreme conditions such as hunger and cold. Humans also become Wendigos when possessed by a prowling spirit during a moment of weakness. Wendigos are described as extremely thin, with the skull and skeleton pushing through its ash-colored mummy-like skin. The Wendigo usually has powers such as superhuman strength and stamina that allow it to stalk, overpower, and devour its victims. Wendigos have exceptional eyesight, hearing, and a sense of smell. They are said to move with the speed of the wind and have the ability to walk across deep snow or even over open water without sinking. The Wendigo still to this day remains a mystery. 
The Stanley Hotel in Estes Park, Colorado is famous for its hauntings. The Stanley Hotel has hosted many famous guests including Stephen King, whose experience inspired his book The Shining. One haunting is Stanley himself who is often seen in the lobby and appearing in the billiards room behind a member of the tour. Staff at the old hotel reported seeing Stanley disappear in the kitchen as well. Stanley's wife, Flora, also haunts the hotel by a piano playing in the ballroom. People have reported hearing music coming from the room and seeing piano keys moving, but once someone walks across to investigate further, the music stops. One haunted room is 407. Witnesses reported that a light in the corner kept turning on and off, and when the guests asked the ghost to turn the light back on, it did so. Later, noises were heard from an elevator that was not in use. A ghostly face has also been reported to be looking out the window of- Room 418 has reports of haunting activity by ghosts, leaving invisible impressions on the beds. Guests have also complained of noisy ghost children. Stephen King reported a child calling out for his nanny. These hauntings remain a mystery.